good to see lots of people here. It's, it's dance then wherever you may be. And we've got the wonderful Tom Law, who is currently Steph Sargent, but is Tom Law. <laughs> <laughs> and Claire Wallace, who are going to be leading the seminar. I think we've probably got a few more people just joining in. So here have we got then. Where's everyone from? Say hi in the chat. We'd love to know what church you're from, what your name is. And then, yeah, maybe what's your highlight of one event so far? Is anyone camping? If anyone's camping, we definitely need to know that. Oh, good old Barnsley. Barnsley. Hi, do you know how to break people in? Oh. Um. <laughs> Who else have we got then? Suffolk. Oh yeah, Anne Calver was brilliant this morning. The worship's been fantastic. We got Bolton, Sandra from Bolton. Oh great. I recognize Tom. Tom Lockwood, he's from Newark. <laughs> Timothy from Wakefield. Nice. Hi guys, as people are coming in, just, just to say hello, this is the Authentic Seminar and it's called Dance Then Wherever You May Be. And uh, we're just asking if everyone could be on mute, but in the chat, just say your name, where you're from, and maybe a highlight from one event so far. And we're desperate to know if, any, if anybody is camping. <laughs> are you camping, Claire? Absolutely not, no. <laughs> I'm actually sat here with a blanket around my legs. It's quite cold. <laughs> it is suddenly cold. It's suddenly gone cold. Yeah. Totally different to last year. Last year on the showground was like heat wave. Heat wave. We had water fights, a slip yeah. And slide. Yeah, totally. Well, we could probably still have a slip and slide this year, but not, not as yeah. enjoyable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember doing a slip and slide last year, which was mainly for the kids. And then the adults started getting involved and absolutely like annihilating it. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. So who else have we got? Chris Alford. Hi, Chris. Hi, Tom Lockwood. Lucy, I'm sure the background in my room gives it away. I'm trying to see now. Welcome. We're good. Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice very one. good, very good. So shall we, uh, shall we make a start or do you want to wait a little bit longer guys? I think we're good to go, aren't we? Very happy to make a start. All right, well, thanks so much Olivia. Uh, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the One Event Authentic Seminar. Um, so at Authentic we totally back you as a generation to live confidently and consistently where you are for Jesus. And today we're going to be talking about how we take a stand in whatever position that is, whether it's slumped or dancing, uh, wherever you are as an individual in and with community with integrity and joy to live a life that gives glory to Jesus. Um, we'll hopefully be breaking out into some Zoom rooms at some point for discussion. Um, otherwise, we'll post questions in the chat. So do join in with that. Uh, we'd love you to be able to take something really practical away today. Um, but first, uh, my name's Claire Wallace. I go to a live church in Lincoln, uh, and this is Tom, who also goes to a live. Um, Tom, I just wanted to ask you, one event, as we're aware, is uh, very different this year. Um, yeah. but I'd love to know, what is one of your funniest one event memories from years gone by? Good question, Claire. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, so, uh, my funniest memory. So, I've got a, quite an embarrassing moment. Would that right. be okay? I love embarrassing. Yeah, so I mean, so I've been coming to what well, was Grapevine at the time since 1995. Um, and um, it must have been, I must have only been about probably 12 ish. And um, we, me and my mates, hired a proper, like, banged up caravan. Um, I think it only cost us like 35 quid for the weekend. So it's pretty much like a shed. And um, on the, on literally on the first day, I mean, I've never done that kind of stuff before. I like, I was still quite young. 
I had no idea how to look after stuff properly. I could even like barely clean my own teeth, let alone uh, camp by myself. Um, but um, we, um, we managed to lock ourselves out of the caravan um, on the first day. And, and we, we realised we'd let the key, we've left the key inside the, um, inside the caravan and we literally couldn't get inside it. Uh, and we was trying our best to work out how to do, but then eventually we, we worked out that there were some screws uh, around one of the windows um of the caravan so we we somehow i don't know how we did it we found a knife or a screwdriver or something like that and we started unscrewing um this window uh, and then we kind of kind of kind of pulled lots of who would climb through the window and get it as i was climbing through uh, one of the site teams thought we were breaking into the caravan um and in the stress of it all my shirt got caught on the uh, window hook um so as they came over and like yelled um, I kind of like panicked and fell and my shirt ripped uh, from bottom to the top, but it also cut my stomach as well. And I was in an absolute mess. And these people were shouting at me and it took me quite a while to, uh, to prove to them that actually it was, it was my caravan. Um, I mean, granted, nobody would want to own that caravan. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's probably one of them. Um, I also broke a kid's nose once on stage um oh, cool. in one of the youth venues yeah good safe yeah, I mean, that, that was an accident I didn't, like, I didn't do it like purposely i, I uh, was playing like human angry birds and um i fired this really hard teddy out of the stage and it went wrong and it hit the kid splat flat in the face uh, and he now leads goo it's jacob who's leading goo uh, over this weekend it, you got a pop -off. so smash my um my favorite one event or no my least favorite one event memory also involved getting stuck in a car so Luke my husband was running the football tournament literally five minutes before it started he came up to me and was like by the way we've been married about a month at this point he was like Claire the keys are stuck in the car I need you to sort that out while I'm doing the football tournament For whatever reason I don't know why we didn't have a spare pair of keys anywhere I'm not sure what happened so I had to find out and phone um some key breaker in a guy he literally came from Sheffield. It's called a locksmith, Claire. It's called a locksmith. <laughs> it might be different for cars, I don't know. He literally came from Sheffield to the showground and it took him about 30 seconds to like slide something into the car, pump it up, hook something in, open the car. And it cost me about £200. And I'm pretty sure that if we weren't married, that would have been it. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, great. So, Tom, why don't you introduce us to what it means to take a stand? Why are we calling this Dance Now, wherever you may be? Yeah, great. Um, so, again, thanks so much for, for coming along, guys. I'm currently sat on the showground doing this, so it kind of feels like I'm representing authentic, like, officially on the showground, which is really cool. Uh, we've been here all week, and actually there's a really good sense on site that, that actually God is doing some really cool stuff, um, and lives actually are being impacted and changed. Uh, and I guess the idea of this seminar really came from a, a point of view of during this time, we've all um, experienced probably a whole load of emotions um, kind of through um, COVID and the Black Lives Matters and all this different kind of stuff. We've had a whole load of things that have emotionally probably drained us and, and things or, or maybe just made us question um, some stuff. And we were chatting about what this could be. And and we, we kind of had this whole sense of like in, the, in each of every moment, we've kind of had probably different postures in, in our life during this time. Um, so I don't know about you, but um, I mean, I've got dreadful physical posture anyway. Um, my wife, my wife was like, a, she used to do Latin and ballroom dancing. So her, her, her uh, kind of posture is absolutely incredible. And I look like the hunchback when I'm next to her. And Olivia's obviously changing her posture now. Um, and so like, it's, so obviously your posture affects so much of your, the way you hold yourself. Um, and obviously through life, when you go through certain things, your posture physically changes. Um, so sometimes if you're, you know, if you're feeling confident, uh, you know, you'll be kind of shoulders back, like I'm ready for this, I can take life on. But actually if you're tired, um, you kind of withdraw yourself, and kind of you, you, your core ends up holding itself up. Um, and, and so that you kind of carry a whole load of emotion and posture. Um, and as we was talking through that, we was gonna we want to kind of say, how do we as, as young adults, uh, as people, how do we learn to stand uh, with a posture um, that is built by, uh, secured by God uh, and by the beauty of community? Uh, there's obviously there's loads of different ways we can talk through standing and that kind of stuff, but we're going to focus mainly on the beauty of standing uh, with God's strength and, and the strength of community. Um, 
so I, I know that I've gone through times when my, my, my mental posture um, has been quite withdrawn. Uh, and actually, I've had to be held up um, by my church, by my friends, by my community. Um, and, and the idea of this dance now, wherever you may be, um, it's quirky. Um, and it, it, we were talking um, about um, how do we start to focus our lives on standing and um, and so when you, when you dance, obviously, um, it's quite hard to dance when you kind of in your bed with your duvet on or like sat on a sofa with your feet up. Um, you actually have to add kind of posture and stance and a stand towards that dancing. And um, it then reminded me of a, um, a thing that I heard ages ago. And this is where this talk's going to get um, completely random in terms of what I'm saying. And luckily, Claire is really clever. Uh, so Claire will kind of turn this into something really kind of theological and biblical, uh, whereas I'm just this kind of quirky guy. Um, but um, seahorses are kind of really cool. OK, so uh, we don't often talk about seahorses in church, um, but there's probably one event I'm going to break some boundaries. Um, the beauty about seahorses is um, when they when they meet each other, um, they stay together for life, um, which is really cute. Um, everyone loves a love story. Um, but what's even better about seahorses is every morning when a seahorse wakes up, um, they do a dance ritual with each other. Um, and the reason they do this dance ritual is because that secures their relationship. It reminds them of their relationship um, and it connects them for that day. So every day, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a soppy guy. I love the idea of like Mr. and Mrs. Seahorse um, waking up and literally the first thing they choose to do um, isn't stretch, isn't yawn, isn't rub their eyes. I don't know if seahorses can actually rub their eyes, but um, it's um, the first thing they choose to do is look at each other and dance. Now, there's a whole lot of cute imagery around that, absolutely gorgeously cute imagery. Um, but then when, I, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about this, this session um, and actually how, how when we're wanting to stand and some days it's really, really hard, um, we could try and chuck a whole load of theory and psychology and intelligence stuff at us. But actually, if we chose to go, what does it look like if when I wake up, um, I'm going to stand and choose to dance with the Father, dance with God. Uh, to, so, and the purpose of that is to rekindle that relationship, that daily relationship of that I am close to my Father, I am close to God. This is who we are. This is what it feels like to, to press into the Father. This is what it feels like to have the same momentum as the Father. So the beauty of the seahorses is um, their love is secured when they come together and they recognize who each other is. So actually every morning when we wake up, however hard it might be or however easy it might be, um, one of our postures should or could be to choose to dance with the Father. Now, some of us, it might not be jumping out of bed of a tambourine. Um, it actually might just be um, actually choosing to recognise that God is there and God is dancing for you. Uh, and sometimes someone has to take the lead in the dance. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm no choreographer, uh, you can probably tell. But I do know that when you watch things like Strictly Ballroom, there's somebody who leads the dance. And sometimes you need to do that together. Um, but then, but then actually, the, the times when you're in a line dancing, then you're copying each other, you're doing the same thing. So the more you dance with the Father, the more your dances align and become synchronized. Um, so that's where this title came from. Um, and it also reminded me of the really old school hymn that I used to sing at school. I'm sure you probably did as well, uh, which was Dance Then Wherever You May Be. I am the Lord of the Dance, said he. Um, and I just think if we wake up every day recognizing that God is the Lord of the Dance, who every morning we can kind of lean against and let him lead us in this wonderful motion uh, of dancing with the Lord. Um, and I think um, that's the idea of this seminar. Um, I'm probably babbling on and Claire's probably got a whole load of stuff to say. So I'm going to hand over to, uh, to the lovely Claire Wallace. No, I absolutely love that. I never knew that about seahorses either. Um, I love your little quirky knowledge stuff. Um, yeah, and, and one thing I think we want to headline over this whole seminar as well is that we don't, when in part of taking a stand, we, we do want to remember that it is Jesus who has already done that job of standing on our, our behalf. And with as much integrity and devotion and kind of goodwill in the world, we will fail sometimes in the mornings and never be able to dance with the Lord. We'll forget and we will we'll mess up. But he has already done that hard work of standing 
with integrity and total devotion and love and he's given himself on our behalf um, in the stand against sin and death and so we'd hate for you to take away from the seminar any notion of like self-help you could do better than this um, so let's just remember and headline over this whole seminar Jesus has stood before us he's completed the work and he's actually now sat at the round, right hand of God and is cheering us on and interceding for us um, so anyway, I'm sure everyone is sick of hearing right now, it's a strange time, unprecedented time, social distancing. Um, and with that, we can kind of really easily fall into isolation. Um, so Tom's going to talk about and share now the importance of how, how it is that we stand together as community. I think I've heard it said that there has never been a more difficult time but a more important time to be standing together in a community. Um, so Tom, are you okay to share a little bit about how we do that and why we do that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so again, so we've, um, we've spoken about seahorses. Uh, I'm going to chuck uh, another living uh, thing into the mix. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about ants. Um, again, not very often you talk about that in church, but we're going to chat about ants. Um, uh, so, so the word community is a really important word for, for me and my family. Um, so I, I'm naturally a quite a large introvert. Um, I, I struggle to um, talk to uh, people in like an energetic way. Um, th this is really good for me. I quite like kind of standing on a stage or being separate from people. Um, I'm normally quite rubbish at human interaction, um, but this is fine. Uh, but community for us is is brilliant. It's, that's where I can be myself. Uh, we often throw this phrase around. We have done for years uh, about doing life together. Um, and we, we've got people in our life. Uh, we could probably try and get, go for loads of friends if we wanted to. Uh, but we chose the, the beauty of going deeper rather than wider. So deeper with few um, rather than wider with many. So we chose kind of a deep few who we could do our life with. And, and the reason this um, brings ants into the situation, there's a, there's a, there's a kind of a, a quirky philosophy uh, quote, uh, which says that a, a lonely ant dies early. Uh, so a lonely ant dies early. Um, not the most cheerful of statements, um, but actually the, the, the point behind it um, is actually 100% positive. So the idea being that ants do their whole life in community. Uh, their jobs are made easier in community when they walk they walk together it's in a line um, and the issue for an ant actually comes when they take the wrong turn when an ant takes a wrong turn it loses all sense of direction it loses all sense of survival um, and because of that the ant cannot thrive it cannot do its thing it cannot do its job it can't provide it can't eat it can't live so actually the beauty of ants as hideous as they possibly can be uh, and you get freaked out when they end up being in the conservatory or whatever um, it's one of those things where actually when you see an ant on its own actually what that symbolizes is that ant has lost its community that ant has lost its way um, and and again like it's what's really important is with, with this kind of thing is to remember who are your ants who is your colony who are your people that that you are walking with who are the ones who keep you on track who are the ones that as you take that wrong turn they're there to say no we're over here we're doing life here this is what it looks like to be here with us um, so ants are actually an incredible thing and, and when they go on their own they lose their direction so they're kind of their uh, uh, feelers i'm guessing that's what they're called um their, their antennas whatever they're called um, um they, they lose all sense of how they work um, because they haven't got the things by the front and by their back um, so moving this on um, it says in acts 2 44 it says um which says the believers were together and had all things in common they sold possessions and property in order to give those who had need now, obviously the job of the ant is to provide for the whole colony so they gather their things together but the beauty of this verse um, it says that they were all in common they had all things in common so with an ant you know you you, you, you drop a cookie on the in the garden ants have one thing in common they are going to find the best route to go and pick up that sweet treat and together they'll find a way of bringing that back so just as this is saying here, we have all things in common. So us guys here in this room right now, we have all things in common. Together, we have a responsibility and a, an opportunity to be that colony right now. 
we can kind of say, you know, how are you in this line right now? As you joined this Zoom call, um, where are you in your line journey at the moment? Have you got a good ant before you and behind you? Um, and, and I think recognizing that we have all in common, we've got different lives, we do different things. And again, ant will do a different thing, uh, not ant the person, ants will do a different thing completely. Uh, they all take different parts of the weight of an object, um, but take one of them away, that one dies, but also the provision stops for the other colony as well. So with ants, I think if we focus um, as us as human beings, actually we've all got an individual part to play, um, but it has to be a form of a community. That doesn't mean you have to be the life and soul of the party. It doesn't mean you have to do magic tricks and juggle. It doesn't mean you have to be happy all the time. Um, but what it means is, and this is why I live authentic, um, that you have to be your authentic self. So I, I know Luke and Claire really well. Um, we absolutely love them. And um, Luke, Luke lived with us for quite a while before when he was a young gun. Um, and, and I know that these people are in my life. I trust them. I will go deep with them. I trust them with everything. I know when they, if they're annoyed at me, they'll tell me and I'll take it. Um, but also when they love me, they'll tell me and I'll take it. Um, and so I would say these guys are in my colony. I know they are. Uh, and without them, my life wouldn't be as rich as it is now. And I know for me and my wife, through some of the journeys we've had, um, we've definitely needed um, our community around us. You know, a time when actually I struggled to question whether I even wanted to be on the earth. Um, actually, I needed my community. I needed my people to kind of just sit there, not to say anything, but just to know that they were holding my direction. At the time when I couldn't feel my way around, um, I knew I had people around me who were doing exactly the same thing. Claire. I love that. Thank you so much, Tom. And yes, I love you. <laughs> in a great friendly community and way. Um, so we are gonna try and break into Zoom rooms for about five minutes. Uh, Tom, I've sent you some instructions on how you might be able to create that as the host. Um, if that doesn't work, we'll have a little chat on here. I'm gonna share some questions um, that we'll be able to chat with each other about as a community, as an authentic community. Um, and so I think in this time it's to recognise, are we more isolated than we usually are? What is our community right now? Who are we? Um, how do we embed and build and prioritise a community even in a time of social distancing? And also not just for yourself, but looking around you, who are the people that maybe you've seen slip away from your community over this time? And how do you invite them back? You don't want, Jesus went after the order. Jesus told a parable of God who goes after the one. Um, and so how do we go after the one, invite them back in community and pursue them? Um, I'm going to post those questions on the chat. Tom, do you reckon it's going to be possible to? I'm going to save us all a load of time and say, no, I can't. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I think, I mean, I think it'd be great as a whole um, to kind of have those questions really, and we can kind of chat it through. Yeah. So they've just appeared on the chat. Cool. So are you more isolated from community than usual? How can you build and prioritise being in community, even in times of social distancing? Who do you need to invite back into the virtual room? Nice. Great. Cool. Let's go for it. One thing I've found, um, we have small groups or connect groups or live groups, whatever you might call them in on Zoom right now. And I know that a lot of people are getting totally Zoomed out and just fed up of <laughs> doing everything via Zoom. So well done for sticking it out and being here today. Um, but I heard a pastor once saying like, oh, all you guys are complaining about like Zoom connect group, virtual connect group being really rubbish. It's not the same as it is. And he's like, no, you're the one that's rubbish. Like show up, be there, bring yourself, ask better questions. Like if you think it's rubbish, up your game. Um, and that really challenged me as well to be like, oh yeah, like we do make our community. We are an integral part of it. Community is not the same without you in it. And so like we play our part just as us. I'm just going to use the ant analogy again like if one ant breaks the line then that could like scupper the whole lineup I don't know enough about ants to really talk about this but um yeah you are really important in your community um, and so yeah I think it's challenged me to show up and 
be more present even when we're not present in person. Right. Cool. So Jen's put something down here. Um, so I think some people in the village villages are more lonely than others and these times are a good opportunity to help them. My village has a coronavirus help group, wow amazing, which is overseen by the local churches and we're working in the community to help people. Mm. That's so cool and do you know what Jen, that, that, what's really cool about that is actually, um, your, your, let's use the word colony as we're using the analogy, your, your colony actually um, and your, the churches are able to help another um, so actually, what, so eventually, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm now making stuff up about ants, guys. Um, so I think what, what's really, I love the thought of actually another colony going, right, well, together we're stronger. Um, so, so actually, we're here to help you. What do you need? And, and I think actually, during this time, um, the, ch the church has shone. Um, even though, like, technically the doors are shut, um, the, the church has shone. Um, I, I think more people have encountered worship. Uh, than they have done. I think more people have encountered praying. Uh, I think more people have, have encountered this, the love um, that we have for other people. Um, so I think, Jen, that's wicked. I think like that's the way to do it. Um, like, the, the, you know, the, one of the best ways of, of loving people is love in action, um, which is actually brilliant. And, and, and always, always pushing it back to community. Um, that's it. That's great. That is absolutely brilliant. Uh, so we've got a Lucy. Uh, I was pretty isolated before the lockdown and not really part of the community as such anymore after years of being part of one. Um, but lockdown has allowed me to connect with communities and be part of them virtually. And that has helped me uh, a little bit to connect with these. Uh, Lucy, I, do you know what, Lucy? I, I like, I, I'm, well, firstly, I'm sorry you felt isolated. That's like, that's, that's, that's not great. And I'm really sorry for that. Um, and like if, even in this moment, guys, if, if you know if you're if you're in the chat, like say hi to Lucy, um, kind of let her know that you know you're a colony, you're here. Um, there's there's no reason why um, for this hour we you know we we, we forget about each other. Um, there's no reason why because like again, Acts says um, we have all things in common. Um, so I think right now let's just use this as a moment to let people know. Um, but I think it's great that we. Um, yeah, that's great. I think it's, it's amazing that actually we're, 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 we're still talking, we're still using that language of, of, of community. Um, I, I think within this, I'll talk about this in a bit, actually, with, within this, there is always a, a need, a want for community, even when you feel like um, there isn't. Uh, I often use this really sh stupid phrase that I should never say, really. I say this phrase where I don't like people. Um, and because, it's because I find, again, I'm an introvert. Uh, actually, what I, do, I don't mean that at all. Actually, what it means is, is that um, there's something within me that struggles to feel like I'm connecting with them. Um, there's a whole load of insecurities there, maybe. Um, but actually, what it, what it is, is the more we speak about community and the more we speak about being authentic and being ourselves, um, and actually saying, hey, like it's already been done, I'm isolated. I feel a bit lonely right now. Um, I know right at the start of lockdown, I don't know about you guys, but I had this overwhelming sense of fear. Um, so Claire's a doctor. And um, I, I used to send Claire messages saying, Claire, I, I, this is it. I, I, I can't believe this. I'm petrified. This is going to happen to me. Um, and it, that's the kind of thing where you have to speak it out. Uh, and that's what community looks like. I get weekly texts from Tommy like, am I going to die though? <laughs> yeah. I, and all I would say is, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> cool. What else have we got in the chat, Claire? Um, Sarah says, I've been joining with my friend Stephanie's in this session too. Oh, hi Stephanie as well. Um, church in Horncastle for prayer breakfast and she's been joining my home group on Facebook calls. So I feel that we're more connected than ever. Thank you, God. Uh, like, amen to that. Thank you, God, yeah. for providing opportunities for us to connect. Do you know what? I am just so grateful for some technology in this time about how we actually can connect because I can imagine how it would have been so, so different being totally isolated from community and um, not even being able to chat or speak to the spaces on things like this um, and that things like prayer breakfasts and home groups can still go ahead that we can still join together and kind of boost one another call one another out on stuff and encourage one another um, the bible's so full of like um, one another's like how the believers um, shared with one another encourage one another build one another up um, if you just do like a little study on that, you'll see how many of 
those there are and so yeah we need to have times for one another and i'm so grateful that we've had those times also i just love how easy it's been for like other people to connect in with community who aren't usually part of church so like you lucy we found that there have been lots of people who've connected in with online church for the first time ever who wouldn't have mm. in any other time because it's just a bit easier to join in and be a bit you know be a bit more anonymous and like tom if you hate people then it's quite difficult to go to church but um <laughs> yeah so i'm just grateful to god for all the ways that he's used this right so we'll we'll oh name is going to say something else i feel it's been quite a leveler as a stay-at-home mum with disabilities it's easy for me to feel isolated in normal life that is so true so while things have been online i've actually felt more part of things in some way um first off thanks for your bravery thanks so much for sharing that and um yeah i'm sorry that things have felt isolated in normal life and i think this is probably like a really good opportunity to figure out how can we actually be more inclusive, inviting, diverse in the whole of our lives, not just when it's a time when we're online and so it's a bit of a leveller here, but how how do we invite others into not just the virtual room, but like the room all the time, how do we be an inclusive community? And I think- right, Can I just cut in as well, Claire? Yeah, please do. So, um... Ant's purpose really is for, to take everything back to their place of home, uh, to their place where they all live and do their life together. Um, and actually, um, when we start to refer to church, and not only as a holy place, but also our home, um, actually your, your posture will change. So when I'm at home, I'm myself. When I'm at home, I can be vulnerable. When I'm at home, I can dance around as much as I want to. I can, I can try and make my kid laugh. I can play with my dogs. Whatever, whatever I'm doing, I'm more myself at home. So when I, when I start referring to church as also my home, uh, a home that God has built, actually, you can then present yourself um, more of you being yourself. So even though we're not physically in church, um, what we're doing now is a form of church. It's a form of community. Uh, and actually online, we're still doing church. We're still at home because where the Lord is, actually, uh, that can be our home. That can be our rest place. That can be uh, the place where actually, we, again, we can learn to stand and lean against and dance with the Father. Sorry, Claire. No, that's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to move us on now to um, our next kind of point of chat and point of conversation which is all about how we stand with integrity so a, a posture of standing might be anything but but wherever we stand we want to stand with integrity um something that i've found that is difficult in times of isolation when you're on your own is there there is a little bit of a lack of accountability sometimes we get a bit bored and apathetic i know for me that's led me to be a very much an online shopper and maybe have less financial integrity than i would in day-to-day -day life and some of that just comes from boredom but I think there are other patterns that can kind of creep in at this time you know when we when we feel anxious we can develop kind of unhealthy patterns when we're bored we can develop unhealthy stuff um, and so that that kind of isolation and lack of integrity can really creep in in those um, and even in normal life we're presented with so many opportunities to compromise on the way of Jesus and to live as those around us are living in the world and rather than in the way that like is taking a stand as Jesus would have us to do um, and so being a person of integrity that's like an integer is a whole number and so a person of integrity is a whole person who is that same person in whatever place they are sometimes it's it's referred to as the person you are when no one's watching but sometimes i feel like when no one's watching i'm actually a worse person <laughs> than in other life but it's actually like who am i am i the same person when i come before god am i the same person when i kind of present myself with my church community am i the same person within my family within my workplace amongst my friends and and i really want to be a person who says yes i want to be a person who stands with integrity um, and so I just wanted to look at some Bible characters who I know do this best, um, and that is Daniel and his friends. Um, so they were exiled from the Jewish community 
and they were taken into Babylon, which at the time was like a totally different society for them. Imagine kind of coming from a safe family home in a Christian village or something and then to a bustling university town and some of all the areas of compromise that that might entail, like sexually, idolatry, financially. And I think that's probably not too dissimilar to how we might feel if we were starting university or joining a big company or just just joining anywhere with a pervasive culture that is different to the way of Jesus. Um, And so Daniel, his friends who have awesome names, sick names, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. uh, I just really think I want to name my child Abednego now. (laughs) It's just such a good name. so their response when they were called to compromise on their integrity was just absolutely fascinating. So you'll find the story in Daniel chapter three or four, three. Um, so there's this king at the time called Nebuchadnezzar, uh, which is also a cool name, but he's the bad guy. So I don't think I want to name my child after him. Anyway, this king who um, is pretty powerful and he creates a gold statue or has one created of himself and he calls every single person to come and when the, when the trumpets and the flutes are played to bow down before this statue. And Daniel and his friends, they've come from a, you know, a devout, devoted Jewish community. They love God. They've stood for him. And earlier on in Daniel, you'll see how they refused to eat the king's food. Um, and they said, no, we want to, you know, we want to set ourselves apart. We're going to eat a simple diet. Um, and how that actually uh, made themselves glow and kind of be really set apart and stood out. Um, so they, uh, they, um, yeah, they were doing that. They're devoted. They're also like in a small community together. And just, I think this is probably where their key comes from. There were, there were a group of four of them. They loved each other. They, they reminded themselves of God um, and kind of probably spoke the scriptures over each other, prayed together um, and just devoted themselves together. Um, so they weren't alone. And then they were called in this time to come and bow down before this statue and they refuse to so the king gets so angry and he's like how dare you i'm going to give you one more chance you bow down before this statue when the trumpets play um otherwise you're going to be thrown into a blazing furnace which is probably a story you may well have heard of um and what they say in verse 16 to 18 is just astounding to me they say so shadrach meshach and abednego replied to him King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So, I mean, I think i'd hate to think what i would do in that situation being presented with an angry person who's going to throw you into a blazing fire we'd all love to place ourselves in shadrach meshach and abednego their shoes and think oh no we'd be brave we'd be bold but we know (laughs) we know the end of that story we know that they were rescued from the fire because we've read it or we might have heard it in sunday school but but they didn't know that at that point there was like a very real threat before them of death and they still stood their ground. I think they must have spent enough time in total devotion to God, prayer, receiving from him, and also just reminding themselves of the scriptures and all that had gone before them, the miracles that he'd done, the way that he delivered their people before, to know, actually, no, we trust God in this situation. We're not going to bow down before idols. We've seen it go badly. We know that he has his best for us and he's asked us not to do this. So we're not going to. And I'll just quickly skip through the rest of the story. As you might know that the king gets super angry. He makes the fire hotter and then he throws them in there. And what, what the people see is that (laughs) the people aren't burnt up. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they're not burnt up. And what they actually notice is there's another man that they can see they say look i see four men running around walking around in the fire unbound and unharmed and the fourth looks like a son of the gods and so um nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening and shouted shadrach meshach and abednego servants of the most high god come out come here and so god's deliverance of them he um makes it so clear to everybody else that it is god that they are servants of the most high god because they've stood for him and he's come through for them and then i just think 
Nebuchadnezzar's response is um, in verse 28 onwards. He says he then recognizes who God is because of their unwillingness to compromise because of their integrity and um, he says praise be to the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who has sent his angel and rescued his servants they trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god and therefore and this bit gets a bit wild i decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble for no other god can save in this way so maybe um don't take that as like a a given for it, the rest of life but um i just think it's astounding how they they compromise even in the face of total danger of death um and god came through for them and it was recognized um by the king who would ask them to bow down to his statue that it was god that had come through for them so we might not be presented with angry people who want to kill us but i think sometimes you know someone who's asking us to lie on their behalf in the workplace or to take part i don't know if you've ever been to university and been part of a sports team but like the initiation culture drinking culture there um, the pressure to take part in those things and compromise on the way of Jesus is, is huge in those moments. Um, and so I just really want to be a person who is devoted. And I think that came from them being part of that small group, reminding each other of who they are and devoted in prayer and relationship with God. Like Tom was talking about how we dance in the morning, what we do to set ourselves up for those days. Um, that's where I think they got that from and, and one of the keys to that. Um, I have a story, not of myself, but of my husband, Luke, who was asked to lie at work. He was kind of part of a real like pressure office project management thing. Um, and his boss told him on the phone, he, he was on the phone to some other guy who was they were doing a project for his boss told him to lie for him and uh, Luke refused to lie and it could have got him in massive trouble with his boss and then what Luke said to him was you know if I can lie for you I can lie to you and that was like a really um yeah just a way of and then his boss was like oh that's great I don't think he promoted him I think he actually didn't stay in that job very long but <laughs> it was a way of kind of recognizing no I'm a person with integrity I I kind of live this way However, you know, whatever pressure, whatever your position is that you're going to put me under, whatever you might be able to do to me if I don't do what you say, um, this is a person who I am. I think whatever, whether you're going to university, I think, Jen, you've said you're starting uni next month. Come on, that's going to be amazing. Um, or, you know, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's at home, there are opportunities to compromise wherever you are. Um, but I think we can be people who stand with integrity who build discipline and devotion that keep our hearts in line with jesus so we're going to have a little bit of time to chat about that now um just really kind of recognizing what are the areas of life you might be encouraged to compromise on and how will you build discipline and devotion to keep your heart in lead in line with jesus so i'll put those questions there um and just give you a chance to think maybe how you might be encouraged to compromise wherever you are which might be different contexts and how do you build discipline and devotion to keep your heart in line with jesus on a really practical note i think um while you've all got time to think i'll answer maybe my discipline devotion one um like tom was talking about the first thing in the morning the dance in the morning one thing I used to find so tricky was my phone was my alarm clock. And so I would wake up and my phone would be the thing that I first reached out for, turned it off. And then inevitably, if you pick up your phone, it's made to be pretty addictive and give you a bit of a dopamine rush, whatever you do with it. Um, and so I would flick through Instagram, I'd flick through Facebook, I'd flick through messages that I'd had. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I need to go and get ready for work. And my morning would be kind of dead from that point. Um, I would, yeah, just lose out on any time of recognising, God, you are in charge of my day. God, I have a relationship with you. Lord, I'm devoted to you. What do you want to say to me or do with me today? Um, and no time for reading the scriptures either. And so... Uh, yeah, my husband and I um, had a change last year where we got a tease made 
I know we sound like we're probably 85 at this point, but this is um, an alarm clock that also um, boils a pot of tea for you. <laughs> so we would do that now. We have an alarm clock that boils a pot of tea. Um, we have a little flask of milk by our bed and our phones are downstairs. And so, <laughs> yeah, Tom's laughing because we are 85 really. Um, and so we wake up in the morning and we have a cup of tea and our Bible time together, rather than those 20 minutes where you're just scrolling, trying to wake up, wanting to get out of bed. And that has drastically changed um, how our day set up, how I relate to Jesus. Um, and yeah, that's just drastically changed life for us. So that's, that's my discipline devotion time. I'm so sorry as well. I just posted those questions not on the chat. So there we go. <laughs> there they are now. <laughs> Claire, that's brilliant, mate. I absolutely love that. I also like the idea of you guys being 85. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, uh, discipline's the thing, isn't it? So. Um, Mine's not as cool as yours, Claire. Like I didn't go out and buy teas made, but um, I um, I changed the title of my alarm. So on your phone, you can change the title of your alarm. So when it goes off um, on my screen, it says, um, thank God. Um, mm -hmm. So literally all I do is um, in a very kind of blurry eyed state, um, I just say, God, thank you for a new day. Uh, and, and that's simply all I do. Uh, that, that is my probably short intimate dance and until until I get downstairs and, and create space and time to do other things um, but I generally do think sometimes we try and overcomplicate things um, but actually just a simple reminder thank God for my for this new day actually what that then does is that'll probably hopefully make you think twice about actually I should probably read my phone again uh, and the beautiful thing is if you click snooze um, it comes up again. So actually what happens is um, you're, you get into a routine in the morning of, of waking up and I mean, I love a snooze button, um, hitting the snooze button and, and then again, thank God again. Uh, and eventually uh, there's been a couple of times when my alarm goes off and before my, I even read my screen, uh, you get to go, oh, thank God for a new day. I think don't try and overcomplicate it. I, I'm like, um, a dance doesn't have to be complicated. Um, it doesn't have to be difficult. Um, it just has to be something which you can remember um, or, or feel free and open to do. All oh, the lights have just gone out. Um, so, um, yeah, sorry. I'll go back to the questions. Sorry, Claire, I was rambling. Uh, brilliant. Uh, Stephanie's commented, always make time for Jesus. He's more than worth it. Time matters as he sacrificed so much with his great love. Set aside our plans in our day to worship and honour him and look to his word and avoid distractions. I love that. It's so difficult to, like... Um, if you don't set aside time, time just happens. I think if we look at our lives, even if you think you're like the most devoted monk, anyone, like there's still eight hours for sleeping, like maybe two hours, I don't know, for preparing and eating food. If you have a job, there's like time that goes there. And actually, if we, if we don't set aside time, time just slips away. Um, and like we shared at the beginning, like we remember the whole time that Jesus sacrificed for us he's already took a stand on our behalf and that came from his love and he wants he did that to develop a relationship with us so he honors the time that we set aside for him i think i'm conscious that we um, don't have loads of time left so why don't we move on to in fact no he's just shared something so i'm going to share i'm going to read that anyway i've got into the habit of working worship into other aspects of my life i stick a cd on when i'm washing the pots stick a cd on that is almost old school i love it um or cooking dinner things that take up time in my day but don't require my concentration yeah brilliant i love that i find driving as well as a great time for um worship or even like podcasts that are kind of preachers as well or even like audio bible um yeah i love that there are opportunities where we can invite god into our everyday and what we're doing that's cool um so tom finally yeah. have you got another animal that you'd like to tell us about <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I think yeah i mean what's crazy is i've, I've actually got about ten thousand thoughts that i want to try and fit into 10 minutes um so when when looking at 
um, different ways of how to stand, however difficult it is. I think, you know, we've looked at already, like um, your first thought, your first motion, your first movement is dancing with the father. So actually when you want to stand, um, stand first with the father. Um, stand first with the father. The second thing um, is um, stand with your community. So be yourself, be authentic, be open, be kind of um, yeah, open to people doing life with you. Uh, like I said, it's not about doing it with loads of people. I mean, you might want to, that might be good. I just can't handle that. I can't manage that. Um, but uh, but go, go deep with some, let people know who you are. And then um, the, the next one is stand again with the father. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go around a few different areas here because uh, I've, I've got a few things came to my mind as we were, as we were talking. So stand again with the father. So um, one more animal, uh, a tortoise. Um, a female tortoise um, is literally one of the coolest things I've come across. Now, if you look into tortoises, if you've got any spare time. Um, so um, a tortoise, a female tortoise, when it, when it plants um, or lays her eggs, not plants her eggs, not a plant, uh, lays her eggs, um, she actually goes back to the place where she was first born. So a tortoise goes back to the place where she was first born. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but that literally makes me go, wow, that, that's, that's so cool in a whole lot of levels. And I feel like I don't even need to explain what that means to us. Because um, I think by saying it, we already understand it. Um, but if, if you're here and you're saying, do you know what, I am, uh, I am fully in this. I believe that Jesus is real. I believe in God. I've, I am born again. Actually, we should be standing again with the Father. So at points when we're going through something, go back to where you were first born. Go back to the reasons why. For me, it was in a youth venue when I was like 15 years old. A guy called Malcolm Morgan was talking. It wasn't the best talk in the world, um, but I remember a feeling that I had a birthing that I had. Um, so I would, sometimes if I'm never doubting it, I'm like, no, remember that feeling and go back to where you're first born. So stand first with the father, stand with community and stand again with the father. But I'm also going to add one more thing in there, Claire. I'm really sorry. Um, this has got nothing to do with an animal whatsoever. So we're okay. It's going to get a bit more real now. Um, I feel like we need to look into ourselves and understand a little bit of how our brains work and um, so when god created us um he has wired our brains for mystery so we're completely um wired for mystery and uh, now your brain actually does something when this happens so and there's a really cool word i've, I've probably heard me speak before i've probably mentioned it called eugen it's y-u-g-e-n now this word um it's not in the english language um, it's a word that's used to describe um, beauty that's actually indescribable, uh, indescribable. Um, so like, so for me, it's like um, when I wake up in the morning in an autumn's day and there's dew on the spider's web, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. There isn't a word for it. It's just there. It's, wow, that's brilliant. Um, so this word eugen, it's literally an un indescribable beauty. Um, and um, it, it it reminds me of a time when um, we used to have fire pits in our house. Uh, well, we still do. Um, but we're at, at our church a few years ago, we were quite known for, um, in, on a summer's night, uh, would have people around. Sometimes there'd be loads of people. Sometimes there'd be a few people. Um, and we'd just have a fire pit. And, we, you know, we'd chat, we'd do live. Sometimes we would just chat about TV or football or whatever. Uh, but sometimes we'd have these really deep conversations. Um, and... I remember there's this one time where um, a really good friend of mine decided that um, he was struggling with a few things with church uh, and he decided to kind of step away. And at first, I, I remember having this conversation with him. I was like, but, but we had these fire pit moments. We had these moments where we were, we were around a fire and, and we had conversations. We, we were doing life together. Uh, why? What's happened? And, you know, you know, great things. That wasn't the reason he stayed. But um, what, what it is, is for me, there was a moment where around that fire, something happened with us where things were deeper. And I don't know about you, but you've probably said this before. When you stare at fire, you often turn around to somebody and say, why is it we just can't stop looking at the fire? Uh, and someone's bound to say it whenever you're around a fire. Next time you hear it, you'll be like, oh, man, there it is. Um, 
and, and uh, there is actually a little bit of kind of science around this. Now, the, the theology of what I'm about to say can probably be debated by a whole load of people. Um, but in that moment, when I am around with my friends around a fire, for me, we are sharing something. It's a form of communion. We are literally sharing our experiences of God with each other. We are together as one around this fire. Take the fire away from that. We're just sat in a circle looking at each other. So what happens is when, when a fire um, is literally in the middle, what happens when we look at it? Um, a, fry, a fire is actually, um, it follows the rule of, of turbulence. Um, so it's actually a liquid. Um, it's a, quite a chaotic liquid. It's got a flow to it. Um, so when, when you look at it, what happens to your brain is your brain goes to a place um, of mystery. Your brain goes to a place of trying to work out mystery. Um, so my, my thought, I've, I've literally just written it down as, as we were chatting um, on the chat there. Um, I think when we're talking around community, I put, we, we aren't just a community. We are a community that is fueled by mystery. So we are a community that has God in the center. And just like I said about the fire, you take the fire away from the center. There's no mystery. It's just people just staring at each other. Um, but actually with a fire in the middle, we are a community that is fueled by a God given um, mystery. And I think for me, that just helps me kind of connect some things to the Father. Uh, and I think all the way through this, it's obvious that we're saying like to stand, to stand firstly and lastly and in the middle, we have to have God. So community without God, sometimes we'll just be sat in a circle looking at each other. Um, and, and, and I think actually by putting God in the middle, uh, if we turn aside, um, we, we're actually called to a, a place of mystery, uh, to beauty and transcendence, actually. Um, and there's a whole load of brain chemistry around that as well. Um, and, the, and the same thing happens So, like when you're watching a film and, and um, the, the film's over really quickly and all of a sudden you realise that two hours has passed. Uh, but if you're waiting for a bus for two hours, uh, it would seem longer. Uh, the same thing happens when you're in the zone, your brain is wired to a mystery that takes you out of something. Um, so actually, that is a thing that's wired by God. So as you dance, as you hear the music that you can make with you and the Father, there's a mystery that's happening that's been created in your brain. Um, as you're doing community together, as you're talking and staring at the fire together, um, there's a mystery that's fueling this whole community. Um, and actually, as you go back to the wonder of when you first were reborn, um, there is a memory. There is a memory of your mystery. There's a memory of that moment. Um, so don't just be a community. Um, be a community that is fueled by the mystery uh, that God has given you. Um, I, I just want to say thank you for coming along. I hope that's helped. Um, it's literally you. This seminar has come to a, a point where I am over lockdown. I've just been writing out a whole load of thoughts. Um, so for me, this is just me really just, well, I suppose, spitting a whole load of stuff out, really, because I'm going through a whole load of stuff about what is actually community. Um, is it the face-to-face? -face? Is it the physical? Um, is it actually us being together? Or actually, is it just when we choose to recognise that in this moment, there's a fire burning in the middle uh, that is providing mystery, where people can talk out about being isolated, uh, where people feel comfortable to talk about how great their village is and sharing stuff. Um, that, to me, um, is actually what community looks like and what relationship looks like, is when we sit and look at the fire in the middle. Um, and, and, and focus on the fact that actually in this mystery, in this moment, in this moment of beauty, actually community can be built. Uh, I think lives can be changed. And I think in that there's a whole load of stuff around healing and restoration, uh, salvation. Um, there's everything. Um, so that's my thoughts. Uh, I, I hope it's helped. Uh, Claire's just brilliant at kind of sharing the word of God anyway. Um, but um, I think, and I know we've only got like a minute left, Claire, but have you got anything to say? I'd just really love to finish by just reading over um, a passage that I think sums all of this up together for us. Um, and this is in Hebrews chapter 12. And so I'm going to read it and then I might uh, read it again with some comments. So uh, Hebrews chapter 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of the faith. 
For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such oppositions from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, since we're in community, let's stay in community. We're surrounded by people who can witness for us, who've gone ahead of us, are also cheering us on and encouraging us and championing us. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let's be people who stand with integrity, throw off everything that holds us back. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, remembering that he's the one that's gone ahead and done it all before us, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. And just reminding that for the joy that was set before him, he saw kind of a better, he actually came to bring us life, not just set us free from something, but be people who can dance, not just stand or struggle, but dance before the Lord. Um, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's completed it for us. So let's consider him. Let's focus on him. Let's keep our eyes fixed on him. The fire that we're all surrounded, well, surrounding. <laughs> um, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart so that you'll be able to stand and stand firm. So we love you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're praying for you and cheering you on. And yeah, yeah we're just really grateful for you. What do we do now? <laughs> Thank you. That was brilliant, guys. Thanks so much. Really good. Thanks. Great job. <laughs> Great. Well, um, keep on watching one event. There's some really cool stuff coming up. Uh, I know that because I'm here and I know what's coming up. Uh, so keep on tuning in and keep getting involved. And please make sure you check out Authentic as well. Um, follow them on Instagram and all that social stuff that cool kids say that I don't really understand. Um, and thanks, Olivia. Thanks, Olivia, for. I'll yes, say thanks, Olivia. Olivia, for hosting us. Very welcome. <laughs> I also, I also enjoyed seeing Ollie for a very small moment in the corner yeah, of your screen. Corner, yeah. That. that was a yeah, nice he's moment. My, my technical man, he's my IT. So. <laughs> Great. <laughs> We've got some more stuff coming up tonight with Authentic as well. Um, so after the Big Top session tonight, uh, I think it starts about 10 o'clock. There's um, some more Authentic conversations. Authentic, sorry, no, that was last year. Um, authentic Take a Stand, I believe it's called. And we'll be seeing the Pastor Boy Band as well, so you do not. I wait for that. That was like unbelievable scenes. Great <laughs> to see you all there. Thanks, Bless you guys. Everyone. Take care. Stay in community, all right.